Hello, this is Kid Fuzzy Weasel. And the repair guy. And I have issues. That's Jason. Justin. James. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm terrible with names. I'm a horrible person. That's okay, though, because I'm not technically a person. Anyway, this is better our... Better than a Republican. What? I said better than a Republican. Okay, well, now that you guys have turned this off... <laughs> this is our after movie uh, thing. Disjointed talk after seeing the di- not hateful the eight. The hango hate hateful the, eight. Not any. Okay, well something the to do Django with Django eight. Okay, we saw the Django eight. The hateful unchained. The hateful unchained. The hateful eight. It's Quentin Tarantino's eighth movie. It made sure it, to tell you that. And they, and they call it The Hateful Eight. I don't get the font that they use for the title. Okay, that is based on old westerns. Yeah, well, it, it looks silly. That that's, was part of the point, was to make it feel reminiscent of old westerns. Well, in old westerns, you didn't see that much gore, you didn't see that much blood, and you didn't have that much fun. No, you really did not. And I, I grew up on Clint Eastwood, so I can honestly tell you that's way fucking better than Clint Eastwood. All right, so before and I will we say yeah. amen to that because okay, yeah. I hate westerns and I love this movie from beginning to finish. All right, well that's nice. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right, before we get to spoilers, all right? I'm going to post a little there's going to be a little box, little annotation. You guys see it right now unless you're on mobile. You guys on SoundCloud are fucked. That's okay. I don't really post to SoundCloud. You should. I, got I listen a, to you on SoundCloud. I got annoyed at it. Anyway, um, all right, so there's a little box. That's that's a little box you click when you don't want to hear spoilers. We're going to spoil the fuck out of this thing. So if you want to go see the movie, which I recommend, do not watch past this. Click that button, and it will take you to the end where we'll do the, the score out of 10, okay? And all right, here we go. Much else. Here we go, three... Two, last, last time, last thing. Okay, one. So everyone, Mace Window dies at the end. Yeah, everybody dies in the in the movie. First spoiler. Okay, Literally that's probably not a spoiler. Literally every character in the film dies. Every single character minus the horses who probably, probably will froze die. to death in the middle of a blizzard. I will say Twelve they horses. did it tastefully, though. The horses yeah, died? yeah, sure, that was tasteful. As tastefully as you can for a Quentin Tarantino film. Oh, whatever. Sam Jackson died gripping what was left of his shattered testicles. We saw Samuel Jackson make a white naked person suck, stun- his, dick. suck his dick while he froze to death. Tasteful is not a word I would use to describe the movie. Tasteful is not a word I would use to describe anything Quentin Tarantino has ever directed. That is not, however, a bad thing. No, not a bad thing at all. If you're a fan of Tarantino, you're going to like this movie. It was every bit as gory and violent and overtly racist as anything he's ever done, and it was wonderful for it. It was really, really fun. I enjoyed the hell out of it, and it did not feel like a a three-hour film. No, it, it the film for me was broken into two distinct chunks. Yeah. The section where we got to know characters and their motivations, and the section where blood and guts were flying everywhere like confetti. Yeah, for me, the, the movie was uh, one single unit that just kept going. I, 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 I may have misspoke there. I don't mean that it felt broken up in any way. That's just how the story progressed. Yeah, 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 yeah. For me, it was, it was, the first part was the setup, you got to know everybody. The second part, everything went to shit. It's good, that's a good way to say it. And I'll tell you, I went into this movie kind of worried that it was going to (coughs) be boring. Because I've read a lot, I read a few, quite a few reviews of people who didn't like it, said it was long, said it was boring, and the last thing I needed was to sit through a boring three-hour movie. But that didn't happen. It's not boring. If you like Quentin Tarantino's dialogue focus in his narratives, it is not boring. Not Not boring whatsoever. 
Although there was one part that took me out of it a little bit when he narrated it. I don't think he needed to narrate it. Yeah, to come in in what was functionally the second act, even though they called it chapter three. Was that chapter three or four? Chapter It was chapter three because chapter four he didn't narrate and chapter five he fucking came back again. Yeah. But to drop in in the middle of your movie suddenly narrating... Basically just to say, ooh, look, we're going to poison now. Yeah, I, that took me right out of the film. They could have done that entire that, that entire scene without him there and still had the same weight. Yeah. They could have actually cut in the thing with the poison going into the coffee in the middle of uh, the, the speech Samuel Jackson was giving to the old guy about how he made his son suck his dick before he froze to death. But then that would not have been a great setup for the backstory of the other characters. Because it showed... It, that was... That was a good way to show that, at the very least, she was aware she had friends there at that point. She was already aware of it, though. If you, if you take at the She end did of the know them, you're said. right. Yeah, if you're, she, you're very right. She did recognize them. If she, yeah, those they were gang members. Oh yeah, the woman that's being transported by Kurt Russell. Okay, uh, the people in in the in the in the in the thing, being all gang members, and you figuring that out as you go. Actually, just being told it. But with the with the Bob. Yeah. Great name for the character, by the way. <laughs> uh, with with him. With that that whole thing between him and Jackson in the stable in the stable yeah that was that was really 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 funny that was a great setup to 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 a, to a longer I, I I hate to use the word gag but I it was know, I, it was not a gag it was just a setup to another part of the story it was a setup with a long payoff as well I'm talking about gag okay, so that's... there were plenty of good I mean there were plenty of hidden joke gems kind of thing with the door the door was <laughs> fucking funny you got to use two boards <laughs> and they you got to kick it open what well i kind of wondered why they didn't just put something heavy in front of it like a table or one of those numerous dead bodies uh, eh, a table i mean initially kurt russell table. would have done well yeah kurt russell would have done well the old guy just pile them up in front of the door. Would have kept people from leaving easily. But then, how are they going to leave? I guess they were going to pry the boards off. Yeah. Tarantino likes to sodomize and torture black men in his movies, doesn't he? <laughs> Where was the sod? Oh. Oh, right, right. The... Well, he he did the sodomy in this one. I'm yeah. Sorry. Ah, but getting Samuel getting uh, the Samuel Jackson's character getting his nuts blown off. That was rough. That was brutal. Like watching Kurt Russell and that other dude belch their own blood for five solid minutes. Oh, they were. It looks like they were throwing, throwing out their blood. Whatever. Yeah. That I I can live with that because you know, it had a good payoff. He showered her in blood as he died. I knew that was coming the second he mounted her to punch her. Which, by the way, that may have been my favorite running gag in the film was him just beating the shit out of her. Because <laughs> that was as close to a joke as this movie really got. I wouldn't say that exactly. I, I'd call that about as close to a joke as the movie got, was beating the shit out of her. I, I, I really uh, like the dynamic between the two, though. That one the one scene where he goes... Where he goes I think we need a little bit of communication standards. Whenever I elbow you really hard in the face, you shut up. Well, she was a violent murderer person. Yeah, I, 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 I did have some idea going in that she was by design not to be liked. No one. No one was designed to be liked in this. I'll be honest. I went in wanting to like Kurt Russell because I like him as a Western actor. I really enjoy him in westerns. Well, like I said, I went into the movie expecting not a whole lot. I wasn't really expecting a whole lot. And yeah, I I will admit, the movie is kind of, for the most part, flown under the radar, and I think that's largely due in part to its release relative to Star Wars. 
I think some of it has to do with uh, Tarantino himself. He did. He pissed off a couple of people recently. Well, he pissed off the. Uh, did you hear that he pissed off the police unions in New York? Oh God, what he do? <laughs> well, okay. He he stood with the Black Lives Matters protesters. Okay. I don't know exactly what he said, but they the police unions boycotted his films in New York, and I think a couple of other places. Now, as it stands now, the film has received, I think it's gotten $125 million in box office, and it cost $66 million to make. So it clearly didn't hurt the bottom line for the film overall. Um, how long has it been out? Uh, let's, maybe a couple of weeks, two or three weeks. Okay, yeah, it, it may have, a little bit. But it, it made its money back. It did. It did, but in this day and age, especially with the film industry right now for a major release, if it doesn't make a billion dollars, it's not worth anything. Well, I mean, we got to look at Tarantino's history, though. Tarantino isn't... He isn't a box office booming filmmaker. He's Except more the Kill slow Bill. burn. Except with Kill Bill. Kill Bill, yes, you're right. Well, volume two, anyway. But... Uh, He's more, you know, you get long-term sales from his films. Because Tarantino, for all his faults, will always have a cult following due to his films. Absolutely. And there will be generation on generation looking back at his films and probably seeing things that we've missed in terms of just filmmaking techniques and things like that. I doubt that, but I think they'll look back on them as solid stories. Oh, yeah. They, they, I do kind of wonder a great story. what he's going to be like as an old man. What is Tarantino going to be like in his 70s? So far up his own ass he can't see out, but that's not very different. No, I wonder if he'll, if he'll start to t- gradually turn into a Mel Brooksian kind of guy. No, he's just going to turn into the old racist dude sitting in the chair. <laughs> That's Tarantino's future. He's gonna be the old, the old racist dude sitting in a chair playing chess. Yeah, he's just gonna don an old Confederate general suit, start issuing orders to people that'll never listen. Sam Jackson will come over. They'll yell at each other, then leave his friends. That old chestnut. I, 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 I think he'll. I wonder if he's. I don't think he's ever gonna retire. He's, he's not the kind of person who strikes me as someone who would retire. He wouldn't retire, but he would quit making films out of spite. That nearly happened with Hateful Eight, if you recall. I do not recall. This is a movie that almost did not get made when the screenplay leaked online. Right! Right! This movie almost didn't happen. It was to the point where it was considered release as a novel just to get it out there. Hmm. I remember that. I'm glad it was not released as a novel because it would not have carried nearly the same weight with those scenes. Well, the narrator couldn't have come in and jarred you out of it. Although I guess he would have made more sense in a book. Just as a side note. And I really enjoyed the soundtrack when it wasn't something that... I don't know what I'm looking for. A The original soundtrack I enjoyed. His callbacks to old songs, not so very much. Well, they kept cutting out abruptly, if you remember. Yeah, and I think that was to help the pacing. And I'm not 100% sure, but some of the dramatic stings felt overly long, and I'm wondering if that was on purpose. Like, the reveal before the uh, admission that Joe Gage was the one that poisoned him. You remember how long that one went on? Well, I remember how long it was that Samuel L. Jackson's story went on. That went on for a long damn time. That's pretty usual for Tarantino, though. <laughs> long, overdrawn story sequences, I, I'm prepared for. And it just kept getting worse and worse and worse as it went. I sincerely hope that the character was lying about some of the things he did. In this movie? Nah. Because I wanted to like him, I really did. I don't think he was lying at all. I don't think they were lying at all. I don't think anybody was lying in the movie except when they were. You know, you know, things like the Lincoln letter, which I actually really appreciated as just 
a long-term callback to the beginning of the movie. Because I really enjoyed the Lincoln letter as a plot device. Because that, I think, was the thing that really started tipping hands. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that, that, uh, that reveal got the, um, got the, the batter parts of what was going on rolling, as it were. Although there's one thing that I'm unclear on here. What? Christoph Waltz character. Remind me again. Uh, the British guy. The British guy, yeah. How did he have the proper paperwork for an executioner and have the information for a guy that was in town? Probably, well, probably forged it. Or, or he actually got it off the the real executioner. I mean, that's a possibility, and in and in that case, it just happened before we saw it. It's just a little, a little strange to have that dangling thread in a movie that tied itself up so neatly. Huh, that is a little bit of a dangling thread, isn't it? I mean, he didn't even have a callback thing when they when they went through that part where they were setting everything up. Yeah. Huh. The entirety of the movie wrapped itself up in a neat little bow, except for that. Maybe there's going to be a sequel. God, I hope not. That's actually a prequel. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting any old characters back. <laughs> except for maybe, <laughs> what's his name? Goggins? Walter Goggins Jr. or whatever? Yeah, uh, yeah. The character, uh, the, the uh, actor that portrayed Chris Mannix. Who you said the actor's real name sounded more Southern than the, the character's, character's name. name. His well, name is Walter Goggins Jr., for the love of God. <laughs> There's even a junior attached to it? I'm almost certain that if it's not, damn it, don't it fit. Jeez. Walter Goggins Jr. I swear, yeah, they should have just used that name. Although I guess Maddox, Appomattox. Mannix, actually. M A N I X. Mannix. Sounds Mannix? like Maddox. More like Mannix Depressive. Ha 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 ha. No, he was just a stupid Oh, yeah, don't watch this movie if you're easily made depressed or squeamish. Oh, God, no. This is a movie you go into with a couple of expectations. It will make you uncomfortable. (laughs) I didn't get uncomfortable. You're you're a different... You're a little different, though. A few of the... You and I were the only ones in the theater that they really lost our shit at a couple of those horrible, violent deaths. Who? Oh, God, let's see. What was my favorite ultraviolet? Oh, when he blew off Bob's face. That was great. <laughs> my favorite my, my favorite death overall was whenever, right there at the end, uh, Sam L. Jackson's character, Warren, goes and blows Jody's head off, and you just see skull and brain matter. That I did not expect face. so abruptly. <laughs> I, I expected I that immediately from the angle they chose. See, I was not paying attention to the angle. And I knew, because the way they did it, I, I instant I, I immediately knew that is a good angle to see blood and brain matter spray out. And immediately after that, they shot him. I, I will admit, I wanted to see more of the character. I want to know just a little bit more about Jody, whatever his last name is. Jody Domingre? Jody Domingre. Uh, played by Channing Tatum, by the way. One of the few roles I've seen Channing Tatum in that I didn't want to punch him. I think he's a good actor overall. I think he just chooses some really bad roles. He did G.I. Joe. That earned it enough. Okay, yeah, you're right. Well, what else did he do? Magic. Uh, uh, he was in Magic Mike, a very popular film for a certain set of 21 people. and 22 Jump Street. He had another reason to hurt him. I'm sorry, I fucking hate Jonah Hill, okay? Jonah Wait, Hill. No, the fat guy? Hill? Yeah. What? He worked with Jonah Hill. Oh, yeah. Why do you hate Jonah Hill? I really strongly dislike everything about him in every movie he's ever been in. Why? He has not played a redeemable, likable character in my eyes. He played that fat guy. So did Zach Galifianakis, but he redeems himself a little. He also played that other fat guy. He played that fat guy next to Adam Sandler. Face. You're really not making him sound better. <laughs> he played that other fat guy next to Adam Sandler's wallet. 
And he also played that fat guy in that movie next to that other guy who played that guy... Slight tangential note here. ...in Green Hornet. If Jonah Hill and Rebel Wilson ever wanted to make a movie together, it's either going to be phenomenal or fucking horrible. I'm leaning more towards the latter. Who's Jonah Rebel? Jonah Hill's the fat guy and Rebel Wilson's that fat Australian Australian chick. chick. Huh? Uh, I do not like her voice. I do not fat like her Australian attitude. blonde chick. That's that pretty much the only way to describe her. She always just plays a fat Australian chick. The fat Australian chick. I don't she know. She was in Last Night of the Museum as the guard. The fat Australian guard. Yeah, she was in Pitch Perfect as I never saw the Pitch fat Perfect. Australian singing lady. <laughs> I barely saw Night of the Museum. I I. I mean no disrespect to Rebel Wilson as a person. As an actress, she only does one thing. And not even that well. Actually, I think I sat next to Pitch Perfect once. I think it was in a bin next to me. So I guess I saw it. Full disclosure, I really enjoy Pitch Perfect. I like the movie. It's fun. But... You got no guts, Jeb! No guts at all! Anyway. I think it takes a lot of guts to admit to liking Pitch Perfect on the internet. Why? It takes a lot of guts to admit liking glitter on the internet. What, I don't know what glitter is. Oh, good. You don't need to. I, mean, I know what glitter is as an object, but not as a noun. Yeah, yeah, well, there. Anyway, so I had an idea, and I lost it completely. Back to the film. Yeah. I'm not sure how we got to Jonah Hill. Because he played the fat guy. <laughs> no! He played the fat guy in the trailer to that movie with the guy who was yeah, a doctor. How did we get there? That's my problem. Because you Channing hate Jonah Tatum. Hill. Channing Tatum, that's Channing right. Channing Tatum played next to the Jonah Hill. Channing Tatum played the character of Jody Domingue, our suave Spanish and French speaking. I got the incest vibe from him. Yeah, I can't be the only one that picked up on that. And he he and he, and he worked with Jonah Hills. <laughs> the character of Jody Domingue looked a bit like he wanted to fuck his sister. The character of Jody Domingue worked with Jonah Hill. No, the, the character of Jody no. Dimingre. In this movie, you didn't see it. it they never in said a basement it. Deleted scene. But oh, okay. Jonah Hill traveled back in time and talked to this guy. Is. Okay, now I understand why Sam Jackson was so eager to blow his head off. There, Not see? because he castrated him with a forty-five caliber shell, but because he worked with Jonah Hill. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the uh, God, rapid castration of, wasn't that bad. A lot of blood in that Hill. movie. Man, there was a lot of blood in this movie. One thing I'm really not clear on in a Tarantino movie is how everyone always looks like they just dipped their hands in a bucket of blood. Well, have you ever bled really bad? I've never bled that bad, no. Oh, well, but if I've... you bleed that bad, you can very easily get covered in your own blood. No, it looks like he dipped his hands in a pocket of blood up well, to his goddamn sleeves. Maybe he bled into his pocket, and he stuck his hand into his pocket. You're reaching here, man. You're reaching. I'm not reaching here. I once had a cut on my leg, and it bled into my pocket. It bled. Did it coat your arms all the way up to nearly your elbow no, in but a it... thick red layer of blood? It coated my hand. It, it coated my hand. The fabric absorbed my blood, and I stuck my hand in my pocket, and I pulled it out, and my hand was covered in blood. That what did not mean I was bleeding really bad. It was a deep gash. It was a sticker vine. A thorn vine went right across my leg. Because I, I rolled down a hill. And anyway, the point is, it's not unreasonable. What would have been unreasonable is if they had Kill Bill blood. You know, where she got... Hitting the toe and oh, no, like I'm gonna a hose just turned on. I'm going to be honest. That would have been fucking great if there just would have been a blood jet shoot out of her boot. <laughs> when he or, shot or, off her big toe. Or if, or if Channing Tatum's body had stood there and blood just shot <laughs> Like a hose. Like someone was down okay, there with a hose. If we got the pit scene level of blood. And you know what I mean from the pit scene, right? Yeah, Army of Darkness. Thank you. If we got that level of blood ejecting in the movie, that might have been a little over the top for Tarantino. 
but I think I still would have enjoyed it nonetheless. See, how come Tarantino doesn't work with uh, that guy? Bruce Campbell? Yeah. Because he's old? So? No, honestly, I think those two would be a match made in heaven. I think I think Quentin Tarantino needs to go in and guest direct some Ash vs. Evil Dead episodes. If I had to guess, and I sincerely mean this, I think Bruce Campbell may be a little too funny for Tarantino films. What? Tarantino films are mostly funny due to the situation, not the person. Name an intentionally funny moment. An intentionally funny moment? Shut the damn door. That was the intentionally funny moment for the movie. The intentionally funny... I can name plenty of intentionally funny moments in in other Tarantino films. Okay. I'm on board. Okay, like when uh, Travolta shot that guy's head off in the car in Pulp Fiction. That was funny. That was funny, yes. That was funny. That whole bit... That was fucking funny. That whole bit with uh, Tarantino's uh, uh, cameo in Pulp Fiction where he's playing that guy. And he's... And he, you know, the guy in the house. They, they go up to the house. All right, I stand corrected. Pulp Fiction was an intentionally funny movie. You're right. Let's and see. I neglected I mean, that film. Kill Bill. Oh, when when that woman's daughter... the In the first movie... Yeah. The woman's daughter comes home and she walks in on her mom and Jonah... Not Jonah. Uh, Whatever. Uma Thurman. Yeah. Uh, in the middle of their sword fight, and they just stop immediately, like, "Hi, honey. You should go upstairs." And she's like, "Okay, I'm gonna murder your mother now. Bye." I mean, even to bring it back to this moment, I, I will grant you the door scene was funny. I personally liked. Uh, again, whenever Sam L. Jackson's character is lying castrated on the bed. And he tells Jody, Jody Domingue to either shit another pistol and throw it up, or he's going to shoot his sister. I thought that was funny, because, you know, Jody's, like, you know, trying to smuggle a pistol up. Or, or do that interrogation, during that interrogation thing, with the three of them up against the wall. Yeah. And, and uh, what's his name, the guy who plays the guy? Yeah, you know, Chris the guy. Mannix. Yeah, Chris, Chris Mannix. Mannix. A a Ouija board junior. I forgot his name again. (laughs) Walter Goggins. Goggins Junior Walter. I hope his last. I I hope there's a junior in there. Otherwise, I've just bastardized his whole name. And he's and he's like laughing, like he's going oh every time. I got you, Natty, (laughs) some bitch. Every time uh, uh, Jackson comes up with a point. Okay, and I'm gonna be honest. When uh, Joe, whatever his name is. Joe Gage. Joe when Joe Dirt. Gage, Joe Dirt, when Joe Dirt admits to poisoning the water hole. Oh shit, I goddamn knew it! I knew it, I goddamn knew it! Tad dancing around like a fucking fool. That was, that was. Dancing great. like an idiot, ready to shoot Joe. <laughs> and damn it, if our eighth player did not appear. Uh, yeah, so it's a good movie. Is were, there, wait, were there eight or nine characters? I did not count uh, the whole time. Okay. Like ten overall. Hold, but hold only on. Eight main uh, in in the main the main the characters. Main, the main All right, characters. let's let's count. Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Sam Jackson, uh, Kurt the guy, Russell, Kurt Russell, the guy who's driving the thing. O. B. Jackson, uh, the the guy, the woman who was with him. Uh, Daisy Domergue. Dom Domergue. Uh, Mannix. Okay, Bob. Uh, the uh, old general guy. Old general uh, the guy. The hangman. The hangman. No, we already got the hangman with Kurt Russell. No. No, 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 no. The, the, oh, okay. the actual you mean, hangman. Uh, Christoph the British Waltz guy. Character. Yeah. Tim Roth. Uh, the... Is that Tim Roth or Christoph Waltz? The uh, British. The actor is Tim Roth. Really? Yeah. The, uh, uh, the... Okay. The, whoever, uh, it was who poisoned the coffee. Joe Gage. Uh, and the... Jody Domingue. That is a... And yeah, we're not... Okay. Jody Domingue, but I feel like we're, we're leaving somebody out. I feel like we are leaving somebody I mean, out. We're leaving the th- three to five characters that were murdered. Did I say Bob? Yeah, yeah we got, you, you got Bob. Bob. Oh, I said Bob. I, okay, so it was. It was like eight. Like eight of them. Yeah. I really feel like I'm leaving somebody out here, though. I think you may be leaving out the general, but he wasn't a main character. No, I, just... I mentioned the general, too. Yeah, he did. Oh, what, really? Yeah. yeah. 
Ah, uh, man. Who is that guy? I really... Well, I mean... Ah, no, I guess I'm not leaving anybody out. Okay, so eight people. Why were we trying to figure out how many people there were? Why do I confuse Tim Roth for fucking Christoph Waltz? I don't know. I, like, they look nothing alike. Why no, they don't. Maybe I'm dumb. Maybe maybe they both work with Jonah Hill. Maybe that's why you don't like either of them. Oh, I hope not. I love Tim Roth as an actor. No, I enjoyed the character. He's great. I mean, Jonah Hill is safe. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, I, 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 personally, my, my, my favorite actor in all of this had to be Tim Roth's character, uh, the hangman, is, is, is who he, Oswaldo he, 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 whatever, Mon, yeah, Mon, 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 Mowbray, Mowbray. Oswaldo Mowbray, Fliberty Gibbet, or, uh, what is it, British guy, uh, Pete Eng- Hickox, English, Pete. English Pete Hickox, English person. Anyway, he had, he personally had to be my favorite character because for the longest time it looked like he was towing the line between which side he was going to be on. He actually proposed peace in the first part of the movie, which made me draw drawn toward him, I guess, as a character in a way. Yeah, I, I like the character overall just because of the, uh, the arc that he went through. Yeah. Including using his own dead body as a bargaining chip. That... His, his soon-to-be not-already-dead body. And damn, he died slowly off-screen, too. He really did. He got shot like four times in the chest and once in the leg. <laughs> he was not going out quick. Okay, so anyway, we liked the movie. I liked it immensely. It was a very good film. I highly suggest that if you can stomach Tarantino and his signature style, absolutely see it. And I'm just, I mean, I'm just saying anyway, because we're getting to the point where I'm going to have to stop the car. But, all right, so so anyway, since we're getting to the parking lot, top uh, tens. Tens, all right, out of out tens. Of ten. We're going to start with just soon. Just soon? What did you think? Honestly, an 8.5. 8.5 out of 10? Uh, the narration, after deliberating it a little bit more, at first I thought it was necessary, but after deliberating the narration, I feel like it could have been done without. Okay. Which drops some points. Jeb. All right, I'm going to uh, fall in about the same camp he did. I'm going to give it a 9. I'm just going to dock it one point because of the really out-of-place narration. And I know that was Tarantino's excuse for a cameo in the film because he really didn't get another, but it wasn't good enough reason. Well, he couldn't play the Jesus statue. Although I wouldn't be surprised if they sculpted it out, uh, out of a picture of him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my score, I'm going to say... I'm not going to be that mean to it because of the narrator. Because Quentin Tarantino often uses narrators. It's just here, it didn't really fit for me. And it didn't really fit for you guys. And it probably didn't fit for a bunch of people. But that's kind of what he does. So I'm going to say... Uh, 9.3 out of 10. Or or maybe an 8.7 out of 10. Okay, one of those one of those higher mark things. So we're going to average it out and call it an 8.8 overall for the group. 8.8 overall for the group. Anyway. Which is a damn fine score. That, it's a good score. It's a must see. Go out and watch it. Bring your little kids to it. <laughs> Bring your grandmother your and dog, your, your, your old people to it. Your ferret, they didn't do it. Bring uh, any, bring uh, your easily sick cousin. Uh, oh, your uh, your grandfather with heart trouble. He'd love this film. <laughs> oh God, Jeb! Man, I was just going for gross out stuff. Now you're gonna bring in murder, man. <laughs> that's horrible. You horrible. Okay, how about this? Your grandfather with heart trouble asterisk must take aspirin. You're still horrible. Must. You're still horrible, Jeb. 